Hello and welcome. Race Room is a PC only racing simulation which these days is available to download via Steam. I've been playing the game for quite a while now and I own most of the available content. Also known as Race Room Racing Experience and often in comments on forums etc, you'll see it referred to as RRE or R3E. In this case we'll just refer to it as Race Room. The Race Room game itself is just a part of the larger Race Room concept which includes the manufacture and sale of gaming seats and accessories. To find out more perhaps listen to the interview I did with Robert from Race Room which I'll include the link to below in the description along with some other relevant links. As many will know Race Room is listed as free to play, meaning that you can download and install it for free and later purchase additional cars and tracks should you wish to. To get you started the download includes a selection of free cars and tracks which will be added to your Steam account. I should note that Race Room now also supports the use of virtual reality headsets, however we won't be going over the virtual reality related options here. To get started with Race Room, you will of course first need to install Steam. As a side note, once you've downloaded Race Room, you may choose to install the game to another hard drive inside the same PC. If for example you have Windows installed on a solid state drive that has limited space and inside the same PC there's another larger standard hard drive to store data on you could install Race Room there. To manage where your Steam installation libraries are stored, follow this path. When starting Race Room there are some launch options to choose from before the game starts. It seems that these options don't appear when starting Race Room from the Steam Store page. So it would perhaps be simpler to start Race Room from your Steam game library, and which is what most people do anyway I guess. You have the option of running the game in 32 or 64 bit versions, or selecting 32 or 64 bit modes for virtual reality. I guess most Windows PCs are now running a 64 bit version of the operating system and if you have 4 GB or more of RAM it's worth choosing the 64 bit version anyway. In this example we'll start Race Room using a Steam account that has not yet purchased any content so we can take a look at some of the free content currently available. The game will load displaying a selection from some of the currently available content. You must then press any key to continue. First select store and then cars and scroll to the base of the list where you'll find a selection of cars listed as free owned. These are the cars available to use for free. Note that it's also free to test drive any of the cars available for purchase in the store, which is a nice option. We'll take a quick test drive in one of these cars. And once you're done, hold the escape key to return to the store. And then select tracks and again at the base of the list you'll find a selection also listed as free owned and which again are yours to use free of charge. We'll cover the store in more detail later. But for now let's look at the available settings options since you'll most likely 
wish to try out the free content first, before purchasing anything. To begin, from the top right corner, select the settings icon and then select sound settings. Choose your desired channel type, in my case headphones, and then check the other available options. Race Room includes some nice car audio options, such as the ability to increase or decrease the level of car transmission whine. Then select HUD settings or heads up display, where you can set up your HUD options. These you'll become more familiar with once you've been playing the game for a while. Note that some heads up display options, such as the track map or virtual mirror, can be managed while driving by assigning buttons to your controller setup. Next we'll take a look at the vehicle settings. The animated driver option allows you to control how the wheel appears when in cockpit view. You can choose either no wheel, wheel only or wheel plus the driver's hands. Note that you can also modify this option when you're driving by pressing the escape key, apply the change and then resume. The steering animation can be set to match the value you apply during the car setup. Or you can customize it here. You can then choose your gear shifting mode and whether to use automatic clutch or not. And now we'll look at the available control settings. To keep things simple, we'll start with some control options already connected to the PC but not yet customized. We select control settings and then controller profiles, where we can see that all available controller devices have been detected correctly. It's possible to play race room using a gamepad, but of course using a wheel if you have one makes the game so much more enjoyable. Since we have a wheel available, we'll select the default profile for this wheel and then check the primary functions option. The primary elements of the wheel set, such as the wheel, accelerator, brake and sequential gear shifters should in most cases already be set up. And this is also where you would set up a H-pattern shifter if you had one. Since we have a three pedal set, we can quickly set up the clutch as well. Driving view we can for example reassign to our keyboard instead of our wheel as we may not be switching views too often. As I'm creating this video, a new feature has been added called Launch Control, and at this time is supported only by the new WTCR cars. You place the car in neutral gear position, hold Launch Control and hold in the accelerator and when ready, release launch control. The car will then automatically start and shift gears up until you disengage the accelerator. And then as an example, assign controls for the ignition and starter, and to reset the car should we come off track, and to quickly pause the game if necessary. Now before continuing with the secondary functions option, notice how the title of the selected profile above is listed as custom. And if we return to the controller profile screen, we can see that an additional controller profile has been created, and which is listed as user created. And we have the option to either rename or delete it, should we ever need to. And now, making sure we have the new 
custom user created profile selected, we can continue with the controller options by checking the secondary functions. This is quite an extensive list, so we won't be looking at all of them. Again, some controls have already been assigned by default. As some quick examples, we'll map the track map toggle to a button on our wheel, along with the force feedback meter, or FFB meter for short. This we can use to check if the force feedback system is causing clipping, which you'll see if the graph goes above the red line. Think of force feedback clipping like dialing the volume on a sound system to the maximum, at which point the sounds may start to crackle, so you dial the volume back down to prevent damaging a speaker. Clipping in a force feedback system is a similar effect, where effects are created that the wheel cannot produce correctly, and over time may perhaps damage the mechanism inside the wheel base. Note that when setting up any car before going on track, you can quickly change the force feedback multiplier should you feel the force feedback is too strong or force feedback clipping is occurring. The virtual mirror toggle we referred to earlier is here and as we can see is already assigned to key number 9. And finally we'll quickly assign some controls to our seating position, for example using the arrow keys on our keyboard. Toggle speed cluster can be used to add the Motec style LCD display from the car dash to the heads up display. Advanced settings is where you can, for example, modify the dead zones of your inputs, such as wheel and pedals, and also enable a H-pattern shifter to be available for those cars that have been designed to use one. The force feedback options you could consider quite advanced as well, I guess. Like the advanced settings above, you can decide to spend some time tweaking these if you wish. For many, the default settings will be sufficient. You can of course disable force feedback, and if you use a gamepad, enable the use of rumble here as well. Again, before you get started, you should check your video settings. General settings first. Select the display you wish to use, and the display mode. In my case, I'm using a 16x9 aspect ratio display at 1080p with a refresh rate of 60Hz. I usually run with VSync disabled. The field of view ranges from 0.5 to 1.3. I'm using a value of 0.8 right now. You could just select Auto, Low, Medium or High and see how the game performs. And as with the settings for a controller, you can also customize the video settings. Whatever you choose to apply will of course depend on the specs of your PC. As a rule of thumb, it's perhaps an idea to start low and work upwards. So perhaps to begin, set any rendering based options to low or medium. Car reflection quality, if I recall correctly, can cause frame rate issues if turned up too high, so perhaps begin with that set to low. Effects like bloom, depth of field and motion blur you could possibly also set to low if you experience any issues. This concept goes the same for pretty much any game you play, and since you may not even notice such things while driving, perhaps even if your PC can support them, you won't need them anyway.
we can take a quick look at the support related options available in game. Click on the icon to bring up a browser window in Steam for forum.sector3studios.com and which if you're going to use regularly is probably easier to access using a regular browser on your PC. You can access this official forum using your Steam account which will negate the need to create another account. And from here you can also access the race room related Steam community discussions. You could always just alt tab back to Steam and access the discussion section for race room there. And when you return to the game, use shift plus tab to toggle the steam overlay off and on. We'll now return to the store to take a look at the content purchasing options. The first thing to note is that the store that appears in game in race room is the same as you'll find at game.raceroom.com forward slash store. And you can log in to the online store there using the same Steam account you use to play Race Room and purchase content. The purchasing process here may prove a bit complicated so we'll try and go through it step by step and present some example use cases to help you better understand things. In Race Room, select Store and we'll look at the recently released WTCR pack and which for the current user who hasn't yet purchased any content is listed as €14.96 at a bulk discount of 55% or 1,499 virtual race points, referred to as VRP. And a single car from that pack, for example the Volkswagen Golf, is €3.98 or 399 virtual race points, also known as VRP. Instead of buying the content through Steam, we'll first look at the cost of the required amounts of VRP. To purchase virtual race points, you must visit raceroomstore.com. Select the relevant version of the site for your language or region and then click on the VRP link. And if we want to purchase the complete WCTR pack, we need 1,499 VRP. So we'll look at the price of 3 times 500 VRP, which works out at 13 euros 47 cents. So 1,500 VRP for 13 euros 47 is of course cheaper than 14 euros 96 through the race room store via Steam. And that's with a discount included. And a single car, the Volkswagen Golf, is 398 or 399 VRP. And although the minimum amount of VRP we can purchase is 500, the price for VRP is still cheaper and we would have the remaining 101 VRP added to our Steam account to use later. Before purchasing VRP, you'll need to create a race room store account. You cannot use your Steam account here since as we referred to earlier, the race room concept also includes the sale of gaming seats and accessories. Once you've purchased your VRP, you'll receive an email including your redeem codes. And then in race room select store and under VRP on the upper right select redeem codes and paste in a code from the email you received and click redeem code. 
And of course, you can also redeem those same codes by visiting game.raceroom.com slash store and signing in using your Steam account. The Race Room store content has been expanding over time, adding essential packs and so on, so keep an eye open for ongoing discounts. When you browse the store, the prices that appear will depend upon any content you may already own. For example, if when buying a car, you purchased a single livery, you will be able to add the additional liveries should you wish to. And you will find that some cars are duplicated in two or more car classes. In that case, if you own one, buying the other will cost you just the price of a livery. And a final note relating to the purchase of content for Raceroom. The Steam store page for Raceroom also includes DLC packs. One example is the Raceroom Nürburgring Legends DLC pack, currently listed as €14.99. Euros. I went to the store in the game for a user who doesn't yet own any content, and adding the content as listed in the DLC pack on Steam worked out at €29.86, or 3,381 VRP. So the pack available directly from Steam includes a 50-60% discount, similar to the WTCR pack in Raceroom's own store we looked at earlier. And some of the DLC packs in Steam may prove useful to new players of Raceroom, similar to the essential packs available from the Raceroom store. Purchasing content directly through Steam DLC packs would not support additional discounts based on any content you may already own in Raceroom. So perhaps check that you don't already own any of the content items available in these DLC packs before purchasing any of them. If you plan to invest some time and money in Raceroom, it might be an idea to bookmark the Raceroom store link, which you can access using your Steam account and the race room store where you can purchase VRP and make it a rule to first check the cost of VRP before purchasing any content through Steam. For example, if you're away from home and subsequently the PC you play race room on and some items in the store are discounted for a short period, you would still be able to purchase them. In all cases, I'll include the links below in the video description. We'll now take a quick look at the portal, where you can view your driver profile and check the leaderboards for any available challenges based on any car and track combinations you own. And any currently available competitions along with accessing the store. And quite often there are competitions which are free to enter. There's a shortcut to the competition section from the main menu screen and from the single player section you can set up a leaderboard challenge. And whatever combination you select here, again based on any content you have access to, will become the default when accessing the leaderboard page, which you can also access from the single player section. In single player, there are three types of events, single, championship and practice. We'll set up a quick practice session in one of the new WTCR cars at Zandvoort. We'll first check the car setup.
and once we're in the car, using the keys we've assigned, set up our seating position since we haven't driven this car before. We'll enable the track map and force feedback meter and use the speed cluster controls to add the MoTeC display to the heads up display. We'll start the car using the ignition and starter and also enable the virtual mirror. Next we'll try a random single event. And this time the Formula US, a fantasy IndyCar style car created by Sector 3 Studios. And we'll select Spa as the circuit. We can choose from the list of predefined rule sets available and then customize accordingly, since in this case we only want to run a quick session with damage options disabled. Again we need to adjust our seating position, so we'll just let the race begin and when we're ready choose the restart option. And finally, we'll set up a quick custom championship using the 1995 
Mercedes DTM at Hockenheim Ring and Portimao. So a quick two round championship and again we'll customize the session parameters accordingly. Multiplayer is available from the main menu. You can browse the available multiplayer sessions and use the available category options to filter the sessions accordingly. You can also host your own race room multiplayer dedicated server by installing the tool available from Steam. To install it in Steam, select Library and then Tools. Then scroll down and look for Race Room Dedicated Server. Right click and choose Install. We'll include the addition of a shortcut to the desktop to make it easier to find. To begin, we click on the shortcut to run the race room dedicated server. If you're looking for help, click the question mark icon on the upper right corner to get access to a forum post where some setup instructions are available. Click to create a new server and give it a name. The default server setup is based on a free car and track selection. Over on the right, you can choose a car class. And in this example, we'll set up a server for GTR 3 cars at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. Apply some additional parameters and apply a server password to access the server should you wish to. Save the changes and then start the server. Note that depending on how your internet connection is set up, you may need to forward some ports to support server connections. Refer to the forum post for instructions if necessary. And then in race room, select multiplayer, look for your server name, select the car, enter the password and then join the server.
Now, while I'm not an expert on the replay system inside Race Room, I can at least run through the basics. Replays are accessible via the movie camera icon in the upper right of the main screen. But before we look at replays, I thought it might be an idea to configure some keyboard shortcuts. So from the options menu, enter the control settings and select the default keyboard profile. We'll then create a custom version of this for use when creating replays. And perhaps give it a unique name. We can then return to the main menu and access the replay section. Here both replays and screenshots created with replays are stored. We begin with the camera placed inside the cockpit of the car we drove in that session. And using the arrows on the left, we can switch to the same view in the other cars in the session. And using the arrows on the right, we can rotate the external view for the currently selected car. And then take a quick look at the various camera types such as cockpit, swingman camera and the movie creator modes. And of course we can use the play controls to scrub back and forth across the replay. I then tried to use a mix of the on-screen controls and the keyboard shortcuts I assigned to create a screenshot. Well, I did say I tried. I assumed the on-screen controls would not be included in my attempt at a screenshot. Before we finish, a final note on managing your Race Room installation. Once installed, Race Room creates a directory inside the following path. And I'm informed that when it comes to player data stored on Steam, only your single player championship progress is stored. So if at any point you're reinstalling Windows or changing PCs or just taking backups in general, then consider backing up this directory. Again, I'm informed that you should mostly back up the replay data folder where the replay data we just took a look at is stored and your custom controller profiles are also stored here. These controller profiles you'll definitely want to keep if you spend a lot of time configuring them. I'll include a list of the folder paths below in the video description. If you enjoyed this video and found it informative, please remember to like and subscribe and share the video. And any comments or questions are welcome in the comment section below the video. A big thanks to Jean-Francois Chardin and Georg Ortner from Sector 3 Studios for assisting in clarifying some items before the creation of this video. Until next time, thank you.